In this video, we're going to cover how to create natural looking random movements with steering behaviors and start combining several of our steering behaviors together to create groups of steering behaviors that will give you some interesting and dynamic results. The first way to implement wandering with vectors is easy but not very good. Still, I'm going to show it so that we have something to compare the better results to. All we need to do is go into our ship, and I've already created this one here, and type steering forces.add new vector random max force. While not necessary, it's also helpful to come over to the create event and set the starting velocity to a random vector as well, so the ship starts out moving. One other thing to note is that I've added an edge wrap script, which will let the ship wrap around the edges of the room. Now we can place this ship in the room, run it, and the ship does wander, but it doesn't look very good. It's jerky and inconsistent, probably not what you're going for. The next way you can make a ship wander is by using Perlin noise. I've got a whole video on how Perlin noise works, so if you need a refresher, there should be a link in the top right. To create a wander behavior with Perlin noise, we'll start by adding a variable, which I'll call Perlin position, and an increment to our create event. Perlin position, we want to be set to a random number, and increment, we want to be pretty low. We also want to create a variable called wander power, which I'm going to set to 200. These two numbers right here, increment and wander power, are the variables that you will want to change in order to change the look of the wander behavior. In our step event, we then increment our Perlin position. Again, if you've watched the Perlin noise video, this should make sense. And we're now ready to use the Perlin noise to create a wander steering force. Now, you could do this in one line, but it would get a little long, so I'm going to break it into two. First, we want to use the Perlin noise function to get us our random number. Then we want to scale that number by wander power. And finally, we want to add our image angle to that number. And after we've done all of that, we can then say steering forces dot add new vector length der max force angle. Vector length there is a vector function I added so that we could make vectors with a length and a direction rather than an X and Y. And you might wonder at this point why we aren't mapping the Perlin noise results to 0 and 360. And the reason is that Perlin noise values are not evenly distributed. They form more of a bell curve. So let's say we remap the Perlin noise output from 0 to 360. Then we would actually get most of our values clustered around 180. This isn't what we want. By scaling the output, we keep the negative and positive range of results. And then by adding image angle to that value, we're getting an offset that clusters around our current image angle, regardless of which direction we're pointing. As mentioned before, you can tweak how this behavior works a lot by changing both the amount you scale the wander angle by, and of course, what your increment value is for the Perlin noise function. These are the numbers that I thought worked well for this particular demonstration. And if we place the ship in the room, and we run it, we can see how much nicer this movement looks compared to the purely random movement we coded before. So this is one of the two wander behaviors that I actually think looks pretty good. However, Perlin noise is not the most efficient function there is, and with steering behaviors, that can really matter. So I want to cover one more way to make a ship wander, the traditional wander behavior created by Craig Reynolds, which looks very similar to the Perlin noise behavior, but is much faster. Which, by the way, I've made it three videos in and haven't even mentioned Craig Reynolds yet. Steering behaviors were created by him, and you can read his original paper about them online for free. It's worth reading and covers a lot of behaviors I probably won't implement, such as path following and flow fields. But here's my implementation of his wander system. First, we take the velocity vector and set its magnitude to a specific distance. The larger it is, the weaker the wander force will be, the smaller, the stronger the wander force will be. Then we add another vector to that one where its length will be a predefined value that I'm going to call wander power and its angle will be a value that we will track and update from frame to frame that I'm going to call wander angle. And this actually gives us a vector that points from our ship's position to a point on an imaginary circle in front of our ship. This is the steering force, though I'm going to take an additional step and limit it by max force which I found works better with our other steering forces as we've set them up. As an illustration, here are some steering forces you would get with a large circle that is close, and here are some that you would get with a small circle far away. The closer or larger the circle is, the stronger the force will be, and the farther away or smaller the circle is, the weaker the force will be. To implement this in code, we copy the velocity vector and set it to a certain length, which I've called wander distance. 
Then we create a new vector using wander power and wander angle and add that new vector together with our scaled velocity vector which gives us that point on our circle. Except that we want to add in our image angle because we want the wander angle to be relative to our ship's direction regardless of which direction the ship is pointing. Then we limit it by max force and finally we update our wander angle by a random value within some predefined range and return our steering force. One thing to note is that while wander angle needs to be an instance variable since it has to persist from frame to frame, wander distance, wander power, and wander change could all be either instance variables or arguments passed into the function. I've chosen to use instance variables, but either could work for you depending upon what you're trying to do. Like before, I've duplicated a ship and I've renamed this one to wander Reynolds, and we can come over to its create event and add these four new variables in. Wander angle, which we can initialize to a random value between zero and 360. Wander distance, wander power, and wander change. The values you choose for these three are how you affect the strength of the wander behavior, and these are values that I found worked well in my project. Next, all we need to do is call this function in our step event with our usual steering forces dot add wander force. And we can put the ship in our room and run it you can see that its behavior is very similar to the Perla noise wander. As a bonus, I've added some debug drawing to this. So if I come over here to the draw event and uncomment this code, we can run it again, and you can see the wander force in action. Now it's time to talk about adding forces together. And here it's also time to admit to a small lie I told in the first steering behaviors tutorial. I said you can just add forces together. And while that is technically true, it probably won't get you the results you want. And the reason is that steering behaviors have a habit of canceling each other out. For example, if this ship wanted to seek this station and flee this other ship, and both steering forces are set to max force, the net result would be no movement. Perhaps more importantly, the net result would be no movement regardless of whether the ship was on this side of the station or on the other side of the station. Even though if we were thinking about steering behaviors as desires, we would probably assume that in this case, our first ship would move towards the station and in the second case, the ship would flee. But before we get to the nuances of adding forces together, let's add wander and seek together directly. Wander is one of those behaviors that actually does work pretty well, just adding it to another behavior because it doesn't strongly affect the primary direction. Instead, it sort of pushes it to the right or the left. So if I come over to this wander seek ship that I created, we can write steering forces dot add seek space station X and Y, which is just an object that has a sprite attached to it, no code, and steering forces dot add wander. Now, if we come over to the room and place the station in some of these wander seek ships and run it, we get something that looks pretty good. And of course, you can tweak this by changing how strong the wander behavior is. But there's another way to do that as well, and that is to weight the steering forces. We can accomplish this with a function that I've named apply force. It takes a force, which needs to be a vector, and a weight, which we will default to one. Then it scales the force by the weight and adds that new scaled force to steering forces. Now, if we come over to wander seek, we can switch out steering forces dot add with apply force, and let the seek behavior default to one while we'll pass in a lower value, a lower weight for wander. We can experiment with a couple of different numbers here and see what it looks like. A low weight for wander means that they will cluster around the station while a higher one gives a much wider wander pattern as the wander force comes closer to equaling the seek force. So weighting behaviors is a great first step, but it often won't be enough. For example, with seek or flee or other similar behaviors, even if you weight one behavior higher than the other, you're unlikely to see the results you want. Imagine if in this scenario, we weighted seek higher than flee. All that would happen is the ship would move slowly towards the target. And more importantly, it would move slowly towards the target regardless of whether the thing it was trying to flee was here behind the target or here in front of the target, because the force is the same. So this brings us to the second thing you'll likely wanna do, change either the weights or the behaviors themselves based upon the environment. For example, you could have a flee and a seek state, where this ship seeks and only seeks until within a certain distance of the ship it wants to flee, and then it flees and only flees. You could also slide the weights around. For example, outside of this radius, the ship might seek at 100% and flee at 0%, but the closer it gets to the ship, the more it flees, until here it flees at 100% and seeks at zero. 
For example, in this demo, I have the ship Object Chaser pursue a random Wander Seek ship. It picks the ship it wants to chase at random and changes it every so often. It's also got a little bit of Wander added to it. And then to the Wander Seek ships, I added an evade behavior if the pursuit ship is close. I like how this looks, but when it comes down to it, how you combine steering forces is up to you, and there are as many ways to do it as there are to combine any other set of player or NPC movement options. So if you haven't yet, this is a great time to download and experiment with the project, and if you have any questions about it, feel free to ask them down below. In the next tutorial, we're going to cover my favorite of all the steering behaviors, flocking, which there'll be a link to once it's up.